Hi, this is Chris with Fisher Workshops, and in this two-part video tutorial, learn how to make my Ladies Desire Leather Tire Bag. This bag, along with its larger Messenger Tire Bag version, were both inspired by my years living in Asia. Although similar in the sense that both bags are built around a tire, this bag was built to be much lighter and more compact than the larger Messenger bag. Perhaps one of the most unique qualities of this bag is the unconventional use of a tire. This feature, along with the natural look and feel of leather, lends to a truly one-of-a-kind bag that's unique properties make it an extremely eye-catching piece. A printable PDF pattern for this bag can be downloaded at fisherworkshops.com. If you like my videos, you can help by liking and sharing this video with others. Please subscribe to Fisher Workshops to get our latest video releases. And thank you for watching. Let's get started by first cutting out two round pieces of leather with a circular cutter. Additional details such as leather types, thickness, and tools used for this project are available in the PDF pattern at fisherworkshops.com. After you've cut out the front and back pieces to the bag, repeat this process to cut out the leather for the lining. I'm fixing a small piece of leather to protect the lining while using the circular cutter. When you finish cutting out the lining, then you can remove the tab. Repeat again for the second piece. Now you should have two exterior and interior lining pieces cut out. Using a stitching groover, carve a stitching groove along the edge of the exterior pieces. When you finish this step, you can stain or dye the leather your preferred color. To see how I stain my leather, please watch my Make a Designer Messenger Tire Bag tutorial. Since I don't plan to stain the interior pieces, I'm just going to apply a little mink oil as a finish. The mink oil will help to provide some added protection and waterproofing to the leather. Buff off any excess oil with a clean rag, and that's it. Using my pattern, I will now mark and punch where the holes will be for each piece. To protect my tools, I'm going to use a poly board under the leather. These boards will protect your punching tools from getting damaged. If you don't have a poly board, then I recommend a household cutting board or a piece of thick scrap leather as a substitute. When punching holes on the front exterior piece, make sure not to punch holes where the bag opening will be. Here's how it should look when you're finished. Fix the interior lining to each exterior piece with contact cement. Apply the contact cement to the entire rough interior surface of both pieces of leather. Once the glue has had a minute or two to set, then you can carefully fix the interior lining to each exterior leather piece. Using the pattern and a ruler, mark and cut where the bag opening will be. Carve stitching grooves along the edges of the leather hinge for the bag opening.
Bevel the edges with an edge beveler on the smooth side of the leather. Then stain or dye the leather to your preferred color, burnish the edges and apply a finish. The edges can be burnished with a wood slicker or a Dremel like the one I'm using. Roughen the area where the leather hinge will go, apply contact cement and fix the hinge to the cover. Apply contact cement to the leather hinge and to the roughened edges of the main opening and fix together. For some sections of this video I've recycled footage from the larger version of this bag, so some of the pieces appear larger that's why. Attach the leather hinge to the exterior cover as illustrated. Cut off any excess leather and punch stitching holes along the stitching grooves we've marked earlier. Cut off any excess leather hinge from the sides, then punch stitching holes along each side of the hinge. After finishing the hinge, continue to punch stitching holes along the edges of the entire exterior piece. Fix your leather to a stitching horse and stitch each end of the hinge onto the exterior leather piece. For hand stitching leather goods, a stitching horse is an important tool. It securely holds your project so both of your hands are free to stitch. When you finish, fold the cover forward to crease the hinge as illustrated. Sand any uneven edges down, stain edges if desired, and burnish the edges with a wood slicker. Now let's prepare to assemble the front pocket. Use a stitching groover to carve stitching grooves along both sides of the gusset. For added detail, you can bevel the edges of the gussets on the smooth side only. Using the gusset, carve a stitching groove along the pocket body where the gussets will be stitched. Bevel the edges of the front pocket belt pieces as illustrated. Continue to carve stitching grooves where the pattern requires. Carve a stitching groove along the front pocket cover piece where the pattern states. After you've prepared all the pieces, dampen the edges of the gussets and fold them upwards to fix to the pocket later.
Using my template, I want to mark where I'll need to roughen the leather and apply contact cement, and fix my pocket lining. Rough and apply contact cement, then fix the pocket lining to the cover. Make sure that you don't sand outside of your traced area, or it may mar your finish. Apply contact cement along the roughened area and leather lining and fix together. Now I'm going to cut a piece of leather for my o-ring that the overlapping belt will snap onto. I'm going to narrow the loop in the center by using a coin to trace the cutout. Narrowing this area will make the leather loop fit neatly over the o-ring. After the loop has been stained and finished, apply a little contact cement to the edges and fix the o-ring to the loop. Roughen the edges of the loop and fix below the center of the hinge on the main opening. Now let's fix the leather lining to the front pocket's cover piece. The purpose of the lining is to add strength to the area and to prevent it from stretching or changing shape. You could opt to not add a lining, but I don't for the reasons I just mentioned. Now let's repeat the same step for the lining on the front pocket's main body piece. Punch stitching holes along the stitching grooves we carved out earlier and stitch together. After you finish stitching this area, bevel the edges with an edge beveler and burnish with a wood slicker. Fix magnetic buttons to the belt strap lining leather pieces as illustrated. Carve a stitching groove where the lining will be stitched onto the belt straps. Stain and finish any remaining pieces before assembling. For best results, allow the sheen to absorb into the sponge so that you don't apply too much product with each application. I will usually repeat the application of sheen three to five times to get my desired results. Using a template, mark and punch rivet holes into the D-ring loops. Fix the D-rings and loops to the belt straps and set with rivets.
apply contact cement to the belt straps and lining and fix together. Using the template, mark and roughen where the belt straps will attach to the cover. Glue together and stitch the components together. Punch stitching holes and stitch together. Apply contact cement and fix the cover to the main body. Using a stitching chisel, punch out your stitching holes. Saddle stitch together. Apply a strong contact cement to the folded edges of the gusset and the rear interior inlay and attach. Punch out your stitching holes. Now saddle stitch the gussets on. Using a pattern, mark where your magnet will be fixed to the front pocket. Cut several slots for the magnets where you marked earlier. Roughen the area where the glue will be attached. Apply a strong contact adhesive and attach as illustrated.
Punch stitching holes and saddle stitch the pocket body to the back front. Apply contact cement to the edges in the pocket body and fix together. Punch stitching holes with a pair of hand stitching hole pliers and saddle stitch together. Burnish the edges. That's the end of part one. Thank you for watching.